and we're live. Hi, I'm Tim Van. Whoa, I got the ding bell going on my, my computer. <laughs> we're live right now. This is Roxim Live. The, the, the bell they're ringing was telling me that the stock market just closed. Um, it must be 2 p.m. Eastern time zone. Um, I forgot that I had turned on my, st my stock ticker. Not that I make money on stocks. <laughs> I lose money. Um, so you're watching Roxim Live. This is where we answer your questions about how to use the Roxim software. So if you have any questions, now is the time you can start typing them in. This live presentation depends solely on you and your questions. That's what I'm going to talk about. So we have, ooh, we got 10 people already in the house today. We got uh, Rod from Ohio, Michael O'Brien from Mesa, Arizona, Mark Gillette from Orlando. Um, go ahead and type your questions. Um, let me show you my screen here because we'll, we'll be on the computer a lot. So what we have here is the Apogee website and our, our web address is uh, www.apogeerockets.com which you can kind of see up here at the top of my screen on my, uh, my background wall right over here. Um, on our website is where you can find the software. Um, if you want to purchase it outright, just go to the shopping shop button here and go to Rocket Software and you can get Roxim and Roxim Pro. If you have older versions like version 8 or version 9, you can get the upgrade. Um, if you're a school or, or um, a group that's doing the TARC, the American Rocketry Competition, which is just going to get underway here September 1st. Um, that's where you would go to get the, the special rates. Um, if you want to learn more about the software, go here to How To and Guides. Um, go to um, Software and go to you know any one of these but i always start here at what is roxim so those people that are brand new this is where it will tell you what it can do all the cool things um, i'm kind of going too fast for you but um, if you want to download a free trial version there's a free 30-day trial version right here that you can play with um, okay, um, that's kind of like the basics that I go over every time. Um, if you'd like to learn how to use the software and you're not coming to the live Roxim event, um, if you go to the how-to and guides on our website, again, go to the software and then go over here to the how-to info. And the first one is the video tutorials. And that's kind of like the official ones. Um, and then if you want to see our previous Lock, Roxim Live trainings, click on this one right here. I think this is uh, episode number 33 because we have 32 listed here on our website so far. Um, when we post, post these up here on our website, we, we show you what the topic is and then the timestamp. So if you're watching on YouTube, you can find that um, topic really fast. Um, if to search this page, um, I wouldn't use the search the website because it's going to search our entire website. But if you want to just search the page for a specific topic, um, like you know, Tark nose cone, you can come um, on your keyboard on your computer, do Command F or Control F if you're on Windows. And what it does is it brings up a special search bar right here that's only going to search on this particular page. So I would do like Tark, and it shows me there's two matches. Here's the first one right here, and then here's the second one way over here on the side. Um, so that's how you are search our web page to look for those specific topics because we cover so much on this thing. Let me uh, quit uh, some of these programs that are beeping at me. Okay, um, we have Marcos from Brazil. Brazil, that is cool. Uh, Mark Gillette, he's got the first question. He says, how do you add, I'm looking over here on my monitor down here. How do you add a second parachute deployment? Okay, Mark, we can cover that one. Um, 
and Joel Noble says, are the videos up to date for Roxim 10? Basically, yes, Joe. The, the, there wasn't a lot of changes from version 9. Um, I'll do Joe's question real quick here first. So if you go to the software under how to and guides, come down to software, go to the tutorials. Um, some of these older videos down here, um, these might be version nine. Let me click on that and see. I'm gonna bring up YouTube here real quick. Writing's not that easy. And it uh, wants to throw a commercial up on me. <laughs> Uh, that's 2014, so that's an older one, but the information is identical. So the, the, the process is the same, it's just the screens look a little bit different. So don't worry too much about that, Joe. The, all the information is correct. And if you are on the Roxim Live page, all those videos are, are really up to date because those are all made this year because we're still in our very first year of making these videos. So how do you add a second parachute to a rocket? So let's open up a rocket design. So if you're new to Roxim, you go to the file open button up here. You can also get to it from the file menu. Um, it's gonna bring up um, the last place that I looked, but if you're brand new to Roxim, it's gonna look in your applications folder. So I'm gonna go to my applications folder um, and then I'm gonna go down to Roxim 10.3 which is the current version. Um, and then inside of that folder, in your applications folder, is a folder called designs. So just open that up and you can see all the different manufacturers that we have here. Uh, let's see what we got. Um, let's go open up a Dynastar kit and we'll go with the Rip Roar. So I'm gonna open up the Rip Roar. Oh, that's a two-stage, I didn't want that one. I wanted the uh, um, rising Star, and that's the one I wanted. And I'm not going to say no. Okay, so here's the Rising Star rocket down here on the bottom. Um, I can look at it in 3D. Okay, so I can drag it around with my cursor. I can zoom in. You can see it's got a clear payload bay on there. It's got a motor mount back there. Um, if I look at it in 2D, so here's the 2D views. I got a side view, a top view. The top view and the side view look the same unless there's, you know, three versus four fin. If you have four fin, top view and side view are gonna look the same. If it's three fin, you'll notice that it rotates a little bit different. Um, so here's the side view. And then the other one was the base view. And the base view just looks at the bottom of the rocket. So I'm going to the side view. I am in actually in Roxim Pro. <laughs> I didn't realize that until I looked up here. So let me, uh, I've, I've got Roxim and Roxim Pro in case there was any Roxim Pro questions. Um, uh, I'm gonna open up that same design. Oh man, I should have, okay. Applications. Um, Roxim 10.3, designs. Dinastar, Dinastar, where's my Dinastar? There's my Dinastar. And we want the rising star. Okay, looks identical. Um, but I, the reason is in Roxim, I have this image could be a little bit bigger because of the formatting on, on the diff different software. Um, that's kind of why I, I noticed that. Okay, so if you look in here, this P right here stands for parachute. And so there's just one parachute right now. Um, and if I go to the Design Components tab right up here in the top, this will show me a list of all the parts in the rocket. And if I want to find a part real quick, I can just click on it and it'll find it in the parts tree right here. So this shows me one parachute right now and I can open it up and see what it is. So this is a 32 inch diameter parachute. So I'm gonna change the name of this um, because we're gonna, we're gonna put a second parachute in here and I wanna be able to tell them apart. So I'm gonna put in 32 inch parachute for this one. And then for the second one, um, so if you are just starting out, there's two ways to do it. You can create a brand new parachute or you can duplicate the existing parachute and then just change the size. Um, we'll go ahead and create a new one. So let's say we wanna put the other parachute right up in here in this tube. 
So I'm going to highlight the tube just to find it in the parts tree because that is where I am going to attach the second parachute. So I'm going to uh, highlight that right there and then come over here to parachute. And it always looks in the database first. Um, so I can, I can choose here a 12 inch nylon parachute. And you can see it put it right there. Let me make this screen a little bit bigger for you. Okay, so we're in the parts editor screen and it put it right there at the front of the tube. So it's measured zero inches from the on front of the owning part. And the owning part is that tube so that's where it's located, and then I can just slide it backwards. I'm just moving it kind of in the middle of that payload tube. Now, in three dimensions, um, the parachute doesn't have, because it's kind of an oddball shape, you know, all scrunched up and folded, um, it, it won't show up in 3D. Um, so if I, if I change it to 3D, you can see the rocket. There's nothing inside the tube, but if you look at it in 2D, Yep, there it is. It's definitely there. Um, and I'm going to call this one, let's call it the Drogue 12 inch parachute so we can tell it apart. And let's change the color. Let's change it to a blue color and click uh, change it blue 3D and 2D. <laughs> okay, so I'll click OK. And now we've added the parachute. So that's the simple part. So the, now the next part is, how do you make that parachute come out during a simulation? So for that, we need to run a simulation. And so we're gonna, we're gonna go up here to this button here. And this is the prepare for launch button. And it basically, it, it's like the bottom of the rocket and there's two arrows. There's a gray arrow and a red arrow up there that are pointing downward. So it's coming down to the blast deflector. So that's prepare for launch. So we're going to click on that button. Um, and it shows an engine mount in the back. Let me see if I can make that bigger. So there's the engine mount. It's kind of that, that green color right there. This ring on the inside, um, that's an engine block. So this actually the outside right there is the 24 millimeter diameter tube. We'll just choose an engine. And it doesn't matter which one I take. I'm just going to grab one. Um, and it's an E20 white. It's this W stands for white, so it's got a white flame on it. Um, I got to select the ejection delay, and I'm just going to choose a seven second. And click OK, and you can see it loaded that motor. Um, and now this is where we're going to control the parachutes under flight events. So we're going to go to flight events. You can see our two parachutes, 32-inch chute and our 12-inch chute. So where do we want these to come out? Um, normally, if you have two parachutes, you're controlling it with electronics inside of your rocket. You can't do this with just one ejection charge from one rocket motor. Um, so you need a second ejection charge and electronics are gonna control that. Um, usually the electronics will control both of them and you'll use the ejection charge from the rocket motor as a backup for the drogue parachute. So typically, so like on this rocket, I would reverse the location of these two parachutes. I would put my drogue parachute in the back and my main parachute in the front so that when the ejection charge goes off and the motor, it separates it, pushes out the drogue parachute. Um, you, want, you want it to set it a little bit past Apogee because the electronics were going to fire at Apogee. And then if the electronics fail, then just as it comes over the top, that's when you want your drogue to fire, the, the ejection charge of the rocket motor to fire. So you, you're picking the time so you, that you want it to come just over the top and then fire off the ejection charge. And that's controlled by the delay of the rocket motor. Um, and then if everything goes according to plan, then your electronics in the rocket are going to fire out the main parachute at the proper altitude. So. So my drogue parachute, I want to deploy it at Apogee so that you come here right here to the event. And then on my main parachute, now this is you're going to select a altitude. So I'm going to select my altitude. And I don't know how high this rocket's going to go with, uh, what did I put in here, an E20? Yeah, an E20. 
So let's call it 300 feet that I want my main parachute to come out. So over here under the altitude, so I'm going to deploy at altitude and then this column becomes activated and we'll say 300 feet and then hit the tab key and that makes it accept the value that we just put in. So now we're really ready to run the simulation, but I just want to see how I've got it set up because I don't remember what I set up. So the starting state is going straight up. Right now it's got a 98 inch launch rod. We'll back that down to 60 inches. So that's five feet. Um, our launch conditions were at an altitude of 275 feet above sea level and we got a custom speed wind of eight miles an hour. So both the low wind speed and the high wind speed are the same. So that means that we've got a constant speed coming across the field. No thermals, so I don't have to worry about that, and I have no competition setting. So now to make sure that it's working right, we go hit the flight profile, and we'll go ahead and do that. And it ran the simulation, and I kind of cheated back here because I, I kind of looked at this number right here. Um, it deployed coming down. Um, it, it, the maximum altitude was 1,201 feet. Okay, so this is the 2D flight profile. Okay, we have the rocket sitting down here, and we're gonna launch it right here, and you'll see the rocket take off, and it's laying out smoke as the rocket motor is burning. The smoke is drifting with the wind, and right there, the parachute popped out, and it's falling pretty fast. It's coming down, um, and when this number right down here gets to 300 feet, we expect the main parachute come out. Now the image is not going to change, but the trajectory line of this, let's see if you follow this down, it's going to do a dog leg and it's going to go sideways. Uh, because as it's, it's slowing down, so then the wind is going to make it drift further. So 300 feet, okay, and now you kind of see the dog leg happen. This is characteristic of a dual deployment. Uh, these dots are one second apart during the flight, so you can kind of see it's falling fast because they're, they're far apart, but then they're real close down here. And I'm going to stop the animation and then just grab the time slider and just bring it all the way down to the ground. Um, and you can see our range is 489 feet. So that worked. We've, we've got both parachutes popping out as expected so i hope that answered the question and that was whose question was that that was martin gillette <sighs> michael o'brien says it's hard not to go shopping when seeing the apogee website oh <laughs> uh, yeah sorry <laughs> that's my job uh, rod says is the software needed to get my son involved is this software needed to get my son involved in the sport of rocketry um no but it makes it a lot more fun and educational um, we've got a new product coming out rod um, it's called the launch visualizer um, and it's roxim does have an expense to it but the launch visualizer um, there's a there's a free trial that you might want to check out. Um, let me open up a new website here, um, and I'm just going to go to the launch visualizer, and it's going to open this up. And we're still in beta testing on this. And let's see if it's going to work for me. All right, loading. It seems to be loading slow today. All right, so this is the launch visualizer. And what we're, it does is it performs the simulation just kind of like we did. Let me log in here. Uh, I'm going to log out of that account. I got multiple accounts. Okay, while well, that's doing that, I want to save this design that we just ran. I'm going to do a file, save as, and I'm going to throw it on my desktop. Um, okay, so here's our Mac desktop, and we hit save. Okay, so I just saved it to my desktop because um, what I want to show Rod is that you can open existing Roxim designs. So I'm gonna do when you when I come to the screen here, I'm just gonna I can either select a design, I can choose it from this button here, cancel. 
Ah, I didn't log out. What happened? Where did this guy count? I was like, I should be able to see more designs than that because I've uploaded a lot, but I've got multiple accounts. Like I said, I'm testing with different accounts. See, when I hit the button now, now there should be a lot more. So I have user designs. This, these are the ones that I've uploaded myself. And when you get an account, you can upload um, designs yourself. Um, or you can see what's in the demo designs, the ones that are already there. And we're going to add more to the, the demo designs, but these are just for beta testing right now. I'm going to click cancel here because I want to upload a new design, that one that we just made. So here's the, uh, I'm going to hit browse and it should browse on my computer. So go to the desktop, date modified. So here's the one we just did. I'm going to open that up. You can see as we, uh, I got to upload it. See, that was selecting. Now we're uploading it. Okay, we added it to my database. And it's going to show the rocket sitting on the pad. And you can see it looks a lot like the rocket that uh, we had just been designing. Um, okay, so you can, you can pan this you can rotate it around look at it from any angle what you should notice here is the compass on the on the on the ground because you're going to need to orient your rocket according to your weather conditions where you fly um, this is where it gets really educational so i've loaded my design now i gotta pick where i'm going to launch this rocket so rod i don't know where you're from ohio okay rod is from ohio so um, it's loading images right here it's loading the earth and I'm going to zoom out so you can see that this is a globe. Okay, I'm in Colorado, and that's our default launch site is Colorado. North is the black arrow here, so I need to spin this around. Spin it around so north is more up so you can get kind of a reference where we are. Okay, so there's Colorado. Colorado is one of the rectangular states. He's in Ohio. And there's a, a few launch sites here in Ohio. We got this one here in Akron. I don't know, I've never been to that one. So let's, let's zoom in on this little dot here. It's near Aurora. So there's a launch site here somewhere. Okay, so this is, ooh, this is a nice little, like, like looks like it's an RC airplane field because we got a little runway. Um, so let's put the launch pad, uh, let's put it right on the, the center line of that runway, on the middle of the X. So I'm just going to double click right there on the X, and that's our new launch site. And notice north is straight up, and we looks like we've got some houses to the south. So if you got houses to the south, which way are you going to aim your rocket? Probably to the north. Okay, so that's what I wanted to see. So now I'm going to aim my rocket, and I'm, I'm aimed north, and then I'm going to take the, this angle from vertical, and I'm going to adjust that. Now, we don't want to go more than 30 degrees from vertical, because otherwise we're violating the NAR safety code. So let's say it's 17 degrees, and it doesn't look like it's angled until we rotate this around. Now you can see, yeah, that's definitely angled, and it's angled to the north just like we wanted. Right now we have a wind, eight miles an hour coming out of the west. And how did I know it was eight miles an hour? Because that's the default. So if I look at this steady wind, it shows eight miles an hour from the 270 direction. So that's coming out of the west, coming to my launch site. So if I change this, I can drag this arrow around. So you, See, over here you can see the arrow moving. So now the, the wind is coming out of the north. Let's make the, the wind coming out of the northwest. Okay, and then click OK. So now our wind is coming from a different direction. So that, this might make a difference if you're flying your rocket, you know, depending on the orientation of the rocket and the wind, uh, particularly if you've got a rocket that's an asymmetrical design. Asymmetrical means it's not symmetrical all the way around. Um, think like an airplane. Airplane has wings. So in one direction you see the wings and the other direction you don't see the wings because they're, you know, you're looking head on to it. 
Um, now we're going to pick a rocket motor. So here's our engine mount. I'm going to choose an engine. And remember, we had an E20 before. So here's that E20. And it was a seven second delay. Click OK. So now we've loaded the motor into our rocket. Now let's go to the flight events. And you can see we have two parachutes. We have our drogue parachute, which we just created. Um, it's in the first stage. They're both in the first stage. And our location is they're in the, the core of the rocket. They're not in the pods on the outside because there's no pods. That's what this location means. Um, OK, so our drogue parachute, we want to deploy at Apogee. And our main chute, it's going to deploy at an altitude. Remember, we said 300 feet. So I'm just typing in 300 feet right there. And now our rocket is ready to launch. This, what I did was here is I went down the, the, uh, these buttons right here. So we started by loading the rocket, selecting our launch site, setting the starting state of the rocket, the orientation on the field. Um, the launch conditions are wind. We put in a rocket motor. We set our flight, flight events. Now this one is my data. These are, this is where our flight is going to show up afterwards. Um, you can also choose the columns here. Um, and you can also choose the units, you know, in case you want English or metric or a mix of either or. Um, and then we want to run the simulation. And that's this little button down here. It's like right underneath uh, my face right here. There's the launch button. So we'll just click on the launch button. Ah, and it says I don't have enough points to do this. <laughs> This is what happens when you're beta testing. Ah, uh, I need more points. <laughs> um, hold on a second. Let me get more points. I got to. I got to log out. I'm doing this. Um, let me show up this. Right. I got a. I got a second monitor over here, and that's is where I'm doing it. I got to log in as my administrator. And I got to give myself some points. Um, each point is one newton second, so like a B motor is worth is, is will, will chew up five points. Um, so I'm going to give myself you know a couple thousand points, a couple thousand newton seconds of power, which is you know you could chew that up if you're launching M motors. Um, okay. I'm, I'm editing my account. Uh, okay. Save. Okay. I got to log out. Now I got to log back in to where I was. <laughs> See, if you run out of points, it's going to be easy for you because you can do it by yourself. You can. Points are you're going to, you know, that's, that's how we make the money. You know, how we pay for the software is we're going to sell newton seconds, like rocket motors. Um, okay, so I, when I logged out, it doesn't remember where I am, so I got to select my rocket. Uh, but I did upload it, and that was the rising star, so I'm looking through my, uh, my list here. And I could do a search, but it should be my last one because it was the last one loaded. And select that rocket. Okay, so uh, let's see if it remembered my launch site. It was in Akron, Ohio, wasn't it? Oops, Ohio. I got triply. Showing truth is Northern Ohio. Let's try this one. Somehow I don't think that's going to be it, but does that look like the same launch field? No. I really like that airplane field. Where was that? Hmm. That was, uh, here it is. 
Oops. There's the runway. So I'll double click on it, put it right on the max. Click confirm the launch site. Okay, my starting state, yeah, I forgot everything that I was. And it's like that. Uh, it's going to the north. The wind. We switched our wind around. So our wind is going to come out of the northwest. Rocket motor. I'm doing this fast. I'm trying to get back to where I was. That was an E20-7. Click OK. Flight events. Okay, drogue is at apogee. Main is at altitude of 300 feet. Okay, so now I'm back to where I was. Let's launch the rocket this time. Okay, see, I, I added 2,000 credits. <laughs> this one's going to use up 35, so that's a, an E20 is 35 newton seconds. Okay, so it's running the simulation, and it's, now it's loading all the maps and everything. This is going to give us a most realistic representation of our rockets. There's the X sitting on the launch pad. Let me rotate north around this way. Oops, too fast, too fast. It's a little jumpy. Can't handle, can't, can't do much about that. I can rotate it around. Looks like I'm floating above the launch site just a little bit. Um, and the reason for that is because the way the maps work, the, the, the background texture is called a map. And there's two maps, actually. There's a grid that has the latitude, longitude, and all the different elevations. And then it lays the maps on top. But if there's, there's always some ambiguity between those two maps. And so sometimes the rocket can float a little bit above the ground. Um, and you could correct that. Um, well, I'll show you how to correct that later. But there's the rocket sitting on the pad. I'm just going to zoom out. Let me change the view. Um, so you can see the rocket sitting right there. And I'm going to go to a trajectory view. And that's this button right here. And it's going to show the trajectory. And it's going to reorient my, my view a little bit. So I just have to spin it back around again. And I'm going to zoom in. OK, so there's the rocket sitting on the pad. And we have it aimed to the north, so I assume it's going to go this way. But then we have a wind coming out of the northwest, which is, and this thing is, is coming from the top of the screen, blowing downwards. So I expect the rocket to land eh, somewhere over here, maybe. So the rocket, I'm going to hit the launch button. And the rocket's taking off. You can see a, 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 this view right here shows a close-up view of the rocket. My rocket went out of my screen, so I got to back out a little bit because it went higher than I thought. Okay, so at this point, the drogue just popped out, and I can tell that because it reoriented the rocket down here. Um, and I'm going to find, if you can't find the rocket, just hit this button here. This is called Find the Rocket in the Sky, and it centers the rocket dead center in the screen, and then just use the uh, plus button here to zoom in on your rocket. Now we should see a blue parachute because remember we colored that parachute blue. So there's our blue parachute coming down. <laughs> Somebody just walked in and said, Tim, you got to switch your screen. I forgot to switch my screen back. <laughs> Oh, so you didn't see what I did. So let me let me go back. Uh, uh, Ashley, uh, I I apologize for that. I I really I didn't. You know, when I went in into the administrating administration portion of the software, um, I forgot to switch back. So here's the rocket sitting on the pad. Let me zoom out, find the rocket. There's the rocket sitting on the pad. We ran the simulation, and this simulation went 1,142 feet versus 1,201. 
Now, why is that difference? Uh, because we angled this one uh, before we launched straight up. So because we're angling the rocket, we're, we expect this, a lower altitude, right? Um, so um, let me go back to the main screen, and that's this little red button down here. Um, let me move this over a little bit. So you can see north is the black arrow. So north is going this way. So I'm going to rotate it around. Okay, so now north is pretty much straight up. And this rocket does go higher than I expected. So, okay, so there's the rocket. And then you hit the launch button down here. And the rocket takes off. And it's going upward. You saw the flame coming out. Oh, it's going too high again. So I got to zoom out a little bit. And I'm, I'm zooming out with the scroll wheel on my mouse. So you can see that the green line is the trajectory. The red line on the ground is the ground path. And these vertical lines, again, are one second apart. So at this point, the rocket is coming down on the drogue chute. I'm going to pause it. So the rocket is right there. I'm going to do find the rocket in the sky, even though I know where it is, because when I hit the find the rocket, it puts it right in the center of the screen, and that way you can use these buttons down here, the zoom in, zoom out, because when you, when you click on those buttons, it goes right to the middle of the screen. Um, and I know my rocket is right there, so if I just zoom in, I know it's going to put the rocket eventually in the middle of the screen. So there's the rocket with the blue parachute that we created. Now I'm just spinning it around. Uh, you know, this is the fun part, is seeing the rocket from different angles. And I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Okay, so you can see the ground path. And at this point, down here on the ground, I know something happened because we changed directions. And what happened? Well, that's where the parachute popped out. So and the parachute popped out right at Apogee. And the Apogee is that green dot right there in the sky. Um, and the color is important. If it's, gr it's going to be either green or red. Red means it went more horizontal than vertical. Green means everything is good. It's more up than down or, or more than sideways. So that's where the rocket popped its parachute. Um, and now it's, it's like where the rocket's going to land. Okay, so remember, at 300 feet, we expect our, our main parachute to come out, and that's right up here. So right now, it's at 788 feet, and I'm going to continue to play it. And when this gets down to 300 feet, that's when we expect the, dro uh, the main parachute, the big 32-inch parachute, to pop out. And I'm going to pause it right when we get right below 300 feet so we can actually see the different parachutes. Okay, so we're right below 300 feet. And I want to zoom or find it. And it didn't pop out. I'm seeing the same exact parachute. Something didn't happen. I don't know. So my main parachute did not pop out. Because I expected, I think that was an orange parachute that we had for the main parachute. But we can see where it lands. And which we're still on the flying field, which is really good. So now I got to figure out why my main parachute didn't come out. So did I forget something? Deploy at apogee. That one's correct. Deploy at altitude. 300 feet. Okay, so it didn't deploy. So that was, uh, this feature was working before. Like I said, we are beta testing this right now. So sometimes there's some regressions. Regression means things were working, and now all of a sudden they're not. <laughs> and it's embarrassing, but um, this is why we were beta testing. Um, I will have to figure that out. We'll, we'll try it again. Let's, let's change the, uh, that's not what I want. I want to go to the starting state. Um, let's go, let's change our, um, let's launch to the northwest, to where that wind direction was coming from and rerun the simulation and see what happens by launching more towards the wind than kind of crosswind. I'm looking over here at my, uh, my comments, see if there's anything new. OK, 
Okay, so we have a question that says, when we finish building a rocket and you weigh it, where do you put the weight in Roxem? Should we fiddle with the CG as well? Um, okay, we'll answer that question. That's a good one. Okay. All right, so now this time the rocket is aimed more towards the northwest. So the north is the black arrow here, so I'm going to rotate it around. So on our previous flight, what happened was we launched it to the north, but it actually went a little bit to the northwest. Now let's see if it does pretty much the same thing. So the rocket takes off. You can see the smoke coming out. The smoke is drifting with the wind. And at this point, the parachute popped out. Yeah, this trajectory does look a little different. Um, this this runway must run to the northwest. <laughs> and the rocket's coming down. Let's see if it, it comes out at 300 feet. So I'm looking at this number here. Let's see if my parachute comes out. And no, it didn't. I can I can tell because I'm not seeing that characteristic dog leg. Remember when we talked about the dog leg? Uh, we would see that here as well. Uh, but that trajectory looks different. Let me take my slider bar here. Come on. My, uh, my internet seems slow today. Yeah, it locked up. I'm not getting anything. So let's go answer that other question. Okay, so the other question, that was from not, not Tron, not me. That's the name he's got there. Not Tron, not me. Not Ron, not me. <laughs> okay, so say you weigh your rocket. Um, so on this Dynastar Rising Star, um, currently we've got a mass of 252 grams. And that is with the rocket engine installed. So let's pull the engine out. So I'm going to go prepare for launch again, and then I'm going to go to clear selected so that it pulls the rocket engine out. Click OK. So it's 203 grams instead of 250 something grams. Okay, so now if you weigh the rocket, I had a rocket here. You, okay, you weigh the rocket, um, and you, let's say it weighs 270 grams. So where do you put that mat? Um, mass um, you would put that into mass override this tab right here and you're going to check this box that says use the values below for all the simulations so if I check this box right now the current mass is zero grams and so if I check that box watch that number right there it's going to change to zero you see that it changed to zero and it also put the center of gravity here at the tip because this is where you're going to put the center of gravity location right here so right now is by default it's at zero which is the very tip of the rocket so if you if i weigh that it, it says i said it was 270 grams now i need to know where to put that in the rocket so i'm going to take my rocket i'm just going to balance it on my finger find where it balances, and then measure from the tip to where it balances. And that's the distance that I want to put in on the screen right here where, for the sustainer. Um, let's say, let's, let's put in 17 inches. So 17 inches, I, I don't think that's far enough back. Let's put in 23 inches, not 123, just 23. So 23. So that is the measured center of gravity without the rocket engine installed. You always want to do this without the engine because Roxim knows the weight of the engine. So when you add the engine, it's automatically going to shift the center of gravity. So let's load an engine. And so what I want you to notice is the CG symbol right here at the bottom. 
Um, that is going to shift when we put in our rocket engine. So I'm going to choose an engine. I don't want to cover anything up because I want you to see that center of gravity shift. So let's put in that E30 and then click OK. And you see it, it shifted from there to there because Roxim knows the weight of that rocket motor. So that's OK. And you can launch it and see what happens. Um, almost the same altitude, a little bit higher with this altitude, which is kind of interesting. So hopefully that answered uh, not Ron, not me. Um, funny, I just simulated that rocket this morning to get ready for a club launch tomorrow. Cool. <laughs> She's talking about the rising star. Uh, okay. I think we're out of questions. Let's see if I've, I've missed any. I meant hard not to go shopping on the Apogee website when seeing it open. Yeah, we are out of questions. So if you have a question, we still have like 15 minutes left in this one. Um, I'm waiting. <laughs> uh, we have Clint Browning from North Carolina. Uh, Alan White from Seabrook, Texas. Okay. Let's, uh, I don't know, figure out why in my visualizer I couldn't see my dual deployment. Well, let me, instead of doing that, let's do it in Roxim Pro. Remember, we had Roxim Pro open before. Um, so here's Roxim Pro. And we had choose an engine. We're in that same rocket again. Okay. Um, this one doesn't have the dual deployment. It doesn't have two parachutes. Um, so, because we only have two par one parachute right there. So let's add that other parachute again. Parachute, 12 inch nylon, change the location, change the color. We made it blue before, so we're going to make it blue again. I should have just opened up the existing design. Um, in fact, I think I will. So I'm going to go file, open. I'm going to open up the one that I put on my desktop. Save that one? No. Okay, so, so it just changed that design, but you can see our old simulation that we ran. Uh, choose an engine E20-7, click OK, flight events. Okay, so now we have our two parachutes. So in Roxim Pro, setting up dual deployment is different from Roxim and the launch visualizer. and It's a little bit harder to do. Uh, it involves a second step. So the drogue parachute, we're always going to deploy that at Apogee. But the main parachute, we want to say, it's got to reach Apogee first, and then the second criteria is it's got to reach an altitude, and the altitude has got to below 300 feet. So this is how you set up dual deployment in um, Roxim Pro. And now I need... My starting state, 60-inch launch rod, 8 degrees from vertical, going to the northwest, kind of. Um, so now I need to know where this launch site is. So I'm going to choose a launch site. And unfortunately, I don't think that uh, Ohio launch site is in here. So let's uh, try, let's see, who do we got here? We got somebody from Texas, we got Ohio, we got Black Jack Hill, Georgia. I don't think I got any Georgia launch sites in Roxham Pro. And I guess we'll just choose South Jersey. Click OK. So this, this launch field is in South Jersey, Jersey. Okay. And this one has a launch visualizer built in. It's not online. It takes a little longer to load. 
My internet connection is just seems like really slow today. Can rocket can Roxim simulate a pyramid type rocket? Um, this is by from Mark Sell. Um, the answer, Mark, is it can simulate the pyramid if the pyramid is a cone, but it can't simulate it if the pyramid has flat sides. <laughs> so you'd have to cheat. You'd have to make your rocket look like a cone. Um, so, yeah, flat sides that are angled. You, we can't have angled plates in Roxim. Um, just screw things up. Uh, not Ron, not me asked, if we added a boat tail, how small would you make the aft hole if you extended it with a paper cone? How small would you make the aft hole if you extended it with a paper cone? Uh, let me see if I can answer that question right after this. So this is Roxin Pro, and we're on a launch site in South Jersey. So it's near a baseball diamond. I assume this is like a college or high school or something. It's got a big parking lot. Let me get a, a better perspective here. Try to, try to get my bearings. Okay, so here's, here's New Jersey. And my rocket, I lost my rocket, but you can always hit the home button. It'll find your rocket right there. <laughs> And let's launch it and see what this one does. So the rocket's taking off. You see the flame burn out. And at Apogee, we should see our blue parachute, just like we did before. I'm going to pause it right here. And uh, actually, I can just zoom in. So there's my blue parachute. And we're still at um, an altitude of 1090. Let's zoom back out. And the rocket is coming down. And I'm watching this number right up here. And if it when it drops below 300 feet, you should see the parachute pop out for dual deployment. 600 feet. 400 feet, 377 and let's pause. Okay, so let's zoom in here. Okay, so now we see a bigger parachute. You can kind of see the dog leg right here. So it was coming down nice and straight until this point. And now it's slowing down and it's drifting further with the wind. And it's going to land ooh, right on the edge of that building right there. Not quite on the roof, but in the shadow. Okay, now you can definitely see the dog leg right there. Now, rotating it around a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. So what would you do to this launch to make sure that we're not landing on that building? Um, this is kind of a small launch field, so one thing I'd definitely do is use a smaller motor <laughs> so it doesn't go as high. <laughs> but using dual deployment was a good idea. Because without dual deployment, um, with just a 32-inch 30, parachute, it probably landed like somewhere way out here. Okay, um, boat tails. Let's talk about boat tails. So we've got a rocket, and we want to add a boat tail to this rocket right here. Um, so to add a boat tail, you got to go to the rocket design components. So here's our rocket design components. Now you got to figure out where you're going to add it. And you're going to add it by selecting a part that you're going to attach it to. So we want to attach it to this body tube right there. So you just click on the body tube and it finds the body tube. And now you highlight it and let's say, let's add the boat tail. So if you come over here, there's nothing that's called boat tail. But we're going to call, we're going to use the button that's transition. We're going to click on that and it's going to bring up a database. And we're just going to ignore that. We're going to design it from scratch here. Okay, so we're adding it over here. So first we need to know what the diameter of this tube is right here. 
Um, we can get that information because it's the same diameter of the whole length of the rocket. So I can just actually go to the diameter right here is 2.221 inches right there. But I can also go by looking at the shoulders. Um, so now we're going to have a front shoulder and a rear shoulder. And we're going to use those tubes to set the diameters of our bow tail. So we're going to pick a tube for the front tube. And I know that's a BT-70. So I'm going to choose a compatible tube. And I'm looking for a 56 millimeter, which is BT-70. Or 56 millimeter right there. And choose that one. And what it did was it created a shoulder inside that tube. Don't worry about that. We're going to clear the, that uh, shoulder. But it, it kept the diameter of the outside of that tube. Um, and you can see that on the general tab. See, it, the diameter here is 2.21 inches. Now we're going to do the same thing for the rear diameter. So right now it's zero. And if I, if I change the length right now, you can see we got a perfect cone. But we need to, uh, the question is, how big of a hole do you make on that back uh, paper transition? Um, so what do we want that diameter to be? And I would want that diameter to be the diameter of the rocket motor, the tube that the rocket motor fits into, this tube right there. I know that this is a 24 millimeter engine mount tube. So I'm going to choose a tube that's also 24 millimeters. So I'm going to, again, I'm going to go back to that shoulder. And this time I'm going to do the rear shoulder. And I'm going to do, again, a choose compatible body tube. And now I'm looking for a 24 millimeter. And there's a 24 millimeter one right there. And I click OK. And it you can't see it, but it, it put the shoulder on the back. But now we're going to clear that shoulder off. So I'm going to clear the rear shoulder values. And, just, and it just took the shoulder off, but it left the transition. And if I go here, I can see it's now it's got a rear diameter. And now we just need to adjust the length. What is the length of that transition? So I'm, gonna just, I'm just dragging the slider bar here. And I can make that length anything that I want. So 1.5 is a little bit too small. Um, three inches. So it's going to be three inches. <laughs> um, now we have to select the material. And you said this is going to be paper. Um, it's going to be hollow. Um, we got to set a wall thickness. And so paper is like 0 0.01 inches. And when you select the thickness, and the material, you'll, you'll figure out the mass of that item right there. Um, we'll set the color. Um, let's make it uh, red. And the 2D color, let's make that that color. OK, and click OK. And now we have the boat tail on. Let's look at it in 3D. OK, so there it is. But our rocket engine is not coming out the back of that bow tail. So now we got to change the location of the rocket engine. So I'm going back to the side view here. we gotta, we got to extend this tube right here and make it longer so it hangs out the back. So I'm going to highlight that tube. See if I can find it. There it is right there. That's the engine mount tube. And I'm going to double click on it to edit. OK, so currently the length is 4 inches. And I'm just going to take that slider bar. And it's changing the front. Uh, why is it changing the front? Because that tube right there is not an inside tube. That's an external tube. That's why. So let's cancel that. Save your changes? No. See, this tube right here is not an inside tube. I'm like an inside tube. I'm going to create an inside tube. So I'm going to ha have to highlight the aft body tube and then go to inside tube. Uh, now notice, 
see this icon right here? It, it looks different from this one here. So this design was created incorrectly because the engine mount tube is an outside tube. We need it to be an inside tube, which would be that symbol right there. Um, and because of that, I couldn't change the location. Okay, so on here, make this screen bigger. So here's our engine tube. It's 18 inches long. We don't need it that long. Um, let's set it from the base of the owning part. Okay, so now I need to change the location. Okay, so see, see now here my location is zero inches from the base of this tube, but we need we need that tube positioned so it comes out the back. And remember, we said our cone is three inches long, so if we make this number right here a negative three inches. See what that did? It moved it all the way to the back. Although that cone is too small. <laughs> uh, so we're going to have to adjust our cone. But I do have my engine tube in the right spot. And we're going to say this is a motor mount. It's a 24 millimeter motor. And we'll click OK. So let's go back to that cone. So now this engine mount tube right here, I'm going to it's got an engine block in it, but I'm just going to delete it. Delete it. And it's going to say yes. I'm going to say yes. Okay, so that engine mount tube is gone. We got the new one, which is blue. Let's take that transition here, open that up, and adjust the aft diameter. Let's change the name to boat tail. And my rear diameter. I need to make that a little bit bigger. I'm zooming in. Make sure I got it big enough. See, it's a little small yet. Okay, so there it is. So now we've got the right size hole in the back. Okay, so my engine mount tube is not protruding out the back, so that's why it's it's solid right now. Oops, if you lose your orientation, just re hit recenter camera. Okay, so now we've got the boat tail on there. Um, now the, the question that a lot of people have is, okay, I've made this, now how do I make the paper transition? How do I draw the arcs so I can cut it out and roll it into a transition? So to do that, you have to you have to count for three things. So let's open up the boat tail. Um, and I'm in Roxim Pro, so let me cancel that just real quick. So first, I got to go to my preferences. Preferences, miscellaneous, and then you have to first you have to make sure that you allow for template template exports. So I need to check that right there. Click OK. Because what that does is when I open up my bow tail, it puts a new button down here called Export the Template. Um, so that was the first criteria. Um, the, the other thing that you need to make sure is that there's no shoulders on this nose cone. So right now there's zero diameters for the shoulders. The shoulders is the part that goes into the tube. So we have to make sure when we're creating a transition to print out a template that there is no shoulders on it. If you have a shoulder, it won't print the template. So make sure you, you, you zero out your shoulder values. Um, also make sure that the construction is set to hollow uh, because if you don't do that, um, it, it will be solid and you can't, you can't unwrap a solid thing. It's got to be hollow. Um, so now we can go export template and it's going to ask you where you want to save it and I'm going to save it onto my desktop. 
and it's going to save it as an SVG format. That's scalable vector graphics. Um, and when you save it in this format, um, you need another program to open it. Um, you need a drawing program, and the drawing program that I use is Adobe Illustrator. But there's a free program also out there that you can use called Inkscape, and that allows you to open up SVG file format. So I'm going to click Save, and it exported it, and it put it on my desktop so I know where to find it. So now if I go to Adobe Illustrator, um, and I do File Open, and if I look on my desktop, I should see that SVG file right there. Click open that. And it's going to take us a little while. So now this is the template. And this is a one-to-one -one scale template um, that should look pretty familiar if you've ever done a cone. You've wrapped a cone. And this will make a perfect cone to the dimensions that we just created in Roxim. The only thing that this doesn't have on it is the overlap tab. Um, so you're just bringing both edges together, but you need an overlap tab so you can actually glue it together. Um, so you would, when you print this out, you'd have to, you know, either draw it or, you know, remember to cut a tab so that you can actually roll it together. So that is how you add a boat tail to a rocket. So I'm going to click OK there. Let's see if there's any last minute questions. Mark Sell, can you s simulate grid type fins? Again, Mark, no. <laughs> No. Grid fins. He's trying to do a Falcon 9 or, or a Starship. Um, but no, you can't. We, unfortunately, we can't do a grid fin. Uh, grid fins similar to the slow mo fins, but more horizontally opposed. Again, Mark. Um, all the flat surfaces on Roxim have to be parallel to the body tube. They can't be canted, and they can't be flat, and they can't be angled like a pyramid cone, like a pyramid. Uh, I know, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of things I wish you could do, but it can't. Uh, awesome. Not Ron, not me says that was awesome. Okay, so we are over time again, as always. And we didn't have too many questions. Um, we, we've, we talked about, uh, you know, transitions. We talked about dual deployment and a second parachute. We looked at the Roxen Launch Visualizer, which is in beta testing right now. So it does have some bugs. So if you're going to play around with it, you know, know that it's going to have a couple of little quirks right now until we get them ironed out. Um, but you're not paying anything at this point. So you get when you when you sign up for a free account, if you're on the launch visualizer, I think you get 8000 credits, which is 8000 Newton seconds. So that's several hundred flights if you're just doing small motors. If you want to start doing big motors, you can eat those up pretty quick. But uh, just contact me and I can I can add more credits for you so you can do and somebody's already actually asked for more credits uh, because they're having so much fun playing with it so um, that is the end of our show for today <laughs> thank you for coming I had fun you know it was good seeing you I'm getting to know some of these names um, I have problems saying some of the names but it's, it's very very nice that you're here and I appreciate you coming for a Friday afternoon. Um, so what's the rest of my day going to look like? Well, on the end of Friday, uh, we clean up around Apogee. You know, you know, we've been working hard all week. So the last couple hours, we do clean up in the building. So my duties for today are f vacuuming the front office. And I don't particularly like vacuuming. <laughs> but that's what I get to do. Um, I would much rather clean the bathroom. Go figure. <laughs> uh, the vacuuming is just loud, you know. <laughs> uh, okay, so 
until next week, next week we will be back same time, 2 p.m. on Mountain Time Zone, and it's 4 p.m. on the East Coast. Um, we'll get live here on YouTube. So come back again next week. Come back with a lot more questions. Uh, questions that I can answer. Questions that I can demonstrate. I can't demonstrate in fridge ends or pyramids. Okay, so um, that's the end of the launch for today. Go out and try something new. Go out and launch something this weekend. Or go out and build something. So until next time, you know, I hope you have a great week. So in, in five, four, three, two, one, go out and launch.